Okay, it's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time to find out what stories made it to the headlines on some of the major national dailies today. Of course, I told you a while ago that Mr. Zikelenya Talk, public affairs analyst, is still with us um, to take a look at this as he always does on Thursdays. So we begin with the Punch newspaper, which leads with flood alert. State orders evacuation as FG issues disaster warning. The riders there, Nima ones of massive flood in Kano, Delta, Kebi, Plateau, and 10 others. Aquaibom, Delta, other residents demand alternative shelters. When you look above the masthead, you see principal officers, National Assembly crisis splits APC National Working Committee, Adamu meets Tinubu. Details of that is on page 23 of the Punch newspaper. Telecoms investments hit $75 billion. 5G subscriptions now 60,000. That's according to the NCC. Details on page 20. Tinubu not indicted over forfeited $460,000. That's the Bamidele telling the tribunal. Page 7 is where you find details of that. And going down, you find some of the lesser headlines. UTME forgery reps order probe. Fraudulent app developer risks dismissal. Lagos Killer Cup dismissed for shooting generator repairer dead. Page 4 is where details of that can be found. And Nigeria exports 23 billion naira electricity. Local consumers lament outage. Details of that is on page 19. From the punch, we move straight to the nation newspaper, which is leading with discos intensify efforts for electricity tariffs hike approval. Distribution companies weighing option of gradual increase in what consumers pay. That's the rider accompanying this headline, Discos Intensify Efforts for Electricity Tariffs Hike Approval. Senate Minority Leader, we will build viral opposition. Our nominations in order. Well, friction is going on right now at the National Assembly. Uh, we'll discuss that deeply when we begin to discuss with Mrs. Zekel in your talk. Obi not LP member when nominated to Nubu Tells Tribunal. President, an APC lawyer, tender Labour Party membership register, close defense. All right, so we'll move from the Nation newspaper to Business Day. And Business Day is leading with first negative FDI in 33 years piles pressure on Tinubu. First negative FDI in 33 years piles pressure on Tinubu. Going down, you have Orasanya report lists cost cuts to raise quick cash. FG's 241% recurrent budget bump exposes bloated bureaucracy. This Arasanya report, many have been asking for this report to be revisited. We'll see whether President Tinubu will go back there. Well, CBN's unsettled FX backlog puts investors on hold. That's another headline on Business Day. You find details of these when you pick a copy of this paper. They also have farmers 518 billion naira default exposes anchor borrowers on the belly. Page 2 of Business Day is where details of this anchor borrowers on the belly story can be found. Calls for interest rate hike draw mixed reactions and what to expect from Twitter rival threads. These are all I'll be taking from the front page of 
Business Day. And from there, we'll move to the Guardian newspaper, which leads with trouble in health sector as drugs, cost of care spike by 150%. Page six is where you have details of that. Later on, we'll be speaking with the president of the Manufacturer Society of Nigeria, and we'll be asking him this question, especially now that the federal government is set to reduce uh, the level of imported drugs into the country from 60% to 40%. So we'll be delving deeply into these very important health situations. And so UTM FLNG meets Tinubu on new gas plant promises to crash prices. Page three is where you find that on the Guardian newspaper. SGF governors editors hail the flagship at 40. Akbabio, under pressure, faces opera over an even distribution of 500 billion loan to SMEs. Akbabio, under pressure, faces opera over an even distribution of 500 billion naira loan to SMEs. You find details of that on page six. Sports levy, row over 150 million naira monthly deduction from police salary. That's a news analysis that will be found on page four when you pick up the Guardian newspaper. And above, and on the masthead, you have forest scarcity and naira devaluation. Okay, so. That's all we'll be taking a look at on the front pages. Let's unveil our guests. Ezekiel Enya Otok, public affairs analyst who is joining us from Akwaibom State. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Oh my goodness. Can you unmute yourself because they're not hearing you? Yeah. Oh, we missed the show. I said unveiling. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. So many interesting stories on the pages of this newspaper today, this newspapers today. So let's begin with, I think I should begin with one that um, you would want to talk about and one that I would want you to talk about, especially since he's someone you have a very soft spot for. Akbabio, under pressure faces opera over an even distribution of 500 billion naira loan to SMEs. Talk to us about this. It's on yeah, the Guardian um, newspaper front page. You see, there's a mindset, a mentality that we have in Nigeria, which needs to be corrected. And that's that we have no respect, no regard for data. Because we don't have data, we do our analysis on sentiment. And the first thing that I'm going to look at is how much is going to Southwest? How much is going to Lagos? Then how much is going to South-South? Because Southwest has a president, and then South-South has the Senate president. So we're going to look at those two first, before we now talk in terms of how much is going to, you know, the North. That's another block that they are going to look at. I hope you are hearing me. Yes, I am. Great, great. Then we now look at how much is going to the north. So there's this, we're not asking SMEs, MSMEs, what's the, the, the kind of spread, national spread like? For instance, today, a lot of the startup techs are relocating to Akwaibom. I'll tell you that for free. Because, you know, the tech world is not location specific. You know, when my, my, when my sons came on, 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 on vacation, they kept saying, please make sure the internet connectivity is good because we are still working. So their office didn't know whether they were in UK or they were in Nigeria. The important thing is that they were having their sessions, they were doing their work. The same is what is happening in the internet world. Now, Uyo is becoming an extremely beautiful city. It's becoming, we are having a, a governor now who is... Um, Ms. Anya, talk, give us, can you give us background to this loan, this 500 billion SMEs no, no, loan, for those who you know, do not know? It's, it's a, 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 
SMEs, MSMEs loan or grant is the loans or grants for small scale industries for startups. That's why you talk about MSME, medium, small, and um, um, medium, MSM, uh, medium, small, and um, enterprises. No, no, micro, micro, medium, uh, micro, small, and medium scale industries. Okay? Now, like all these petty traders and things like that, the startups and all those, not the giant industry. So now these are the drivers of the economy. So if you want to give a kind of boost to the economy, you go to the MSMEs. So this loan, when it comes, has to be like distributed because it's a national venture among the states. So the question is, which states get what? And it should not be based because it is issue specific. So you should go to target how many MSMEs are there in Kano, how many are in Jigawa, how many are in Bayelsa, how many are. That is the data you now use to do the spread, okay? Now, if you have a state that maybe Yobe or that does not have so much, because of national you know, uh, consciousness, you may need to look for a way of popping up even those who don't deserve, something like that. So we don't really have the data and statistics. So if they have a lot coming to Akwaibom, they will not realize that it's because the startups are moving to Akwaibom that are creating a more conducive living environment, nicer spaces at relatively cheaper and a more affordable cost. But they will now say, ah, it's because Senate president is from Akwaibom. That is why there is a lot going to Akwaibom. Or president, everybody knows that Lagos is the hub of the startups and everything, you know? So, but down they are saying about 40% going to Lagos. I think we also have to have some level of emotional intelligence and know that these sentiments are there. So the important thing is to come out with lots of facts and figures and get people enlightened. There's too much So who is responsible now for the debt, Government. that, the lack of information? The lack of- Government. Exactly. Government. For instance, I would have expected my brother, the Senate president, to know before time that people are looking at every action he takes to see whether he wants to favor himself or he wants to favor Mr. President. And before you know, they will start tagging him, you know, rubber stamp. He should, he should have, you know, this emotional intelligence, this, this you know, uh, 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 proactive thinkers that tells him how things should be done this, this conversation should have come up before even come out, you know, by independent people, you know, with their practitioners, professionals, who now, like, lay the background before the figures come out. So by the time the figures come out, it's like the tracks have been laid and then the trains are just, just riding. We need to start to bring about cerebral governance. This political governance that we think it doesn't matter, we just discuss and let it out. There has to be a change. The Tinubu administration should come with a refreshing change to approach to governance. If they do, they can do the right thing, but where the perception is wrong, they're going to have a bashing. They can even do the wrong thing, but because the perception is right, the society will help to build it right. Anything you do, no matter how good, the society can destroy it. Anything you do, no matter how bad, the society can help it. So see the society as your partners in this new administration, and you make a headway. Okay. Well, let's move forward now. First negative FDI in 33 years piles pressure on Tinubu. That's on business day. I, I, you see, it's exactly what I talked about in the first instance. Nigeria has six geopolitical zones. There's an X on one whole political zone, geopolitical zone, and that's Southeast. Why do we have that big X on Southeast? Because of insecurity, because of sit at home. These things are all over the world. It's not Nigeria. And any serious-minded investor will look at the, 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 the safety climate of the country, of the region. Before they even, no matter how profitable, you need to be alive for you to enjoy profit. 
And I would have expected Mr. Tinubu, my president, to know that. And by today, I would have expected the president to make Southeast his focal point for two reasons. Number one is that the Southeast is a, a very economically viable hub. The second thing is that the sentiment of the Southeast, he can easily break that sentiment and then win the heart of the people. He knows that. I always say something about the 668. 668. If the two sixes go together, that is 12, 12, 8. 12 is majority, 8 is minority. Now, APC had 8 million, about that. PDP had about 6 million. Labor had about 6 million. Now, it means between PDP and Labor, leave others out, they have about 12 million. You had 8. So you cannot say you had popular vote. You understand me? Hmm. Now, because 8 is less than 12. So because of that, you need to move faster. Okay, he, he you know, signed the bill for, for the young people, you know, the loans bill. Okay, that could be, but that has a lot of, you know, flaws in it. So the momentum it should have created is not that much. Now, the judiciary, it was seen as him doing something to please them. And on the other hand, apart from not having popular vote, the removal of subsidy, you know, has, has almost put him in big trouble, as necessary as it is, I would say. So a very quick, fast, quick um, win would have been the Southeast. Namdi Kanu, let's have your discussion on the table. Southeast, everybody, move down and make sure that that sit at home nonsense stops. I want peace in the Southeast. No, once he did that, the whole, he would win the heart of the Southeasterners. You are already from the Southwest, you have no problem. The Southeasterners. Now, what can you do to pacify the North? Because this is politics. This is governance. This has got to be fast thinking. This has got to be emotional intelligence. That is what governance is all about. It's not just taking decisions. It has to be decisions that are well thought out, that are well strategically laid and things like that. So how will you have FDIs coming in? Number one, your case is being contended in court. People already know the facts and the data, and they know some areas are not looking too good. Number two, a whole region in the southeast is under fire. You can't go there. And not to talk of the northeast, you know, the insurgencies and all those things that are still there. The south-south is relatively quiet right now, you know, so things can come up in the south-south. But you want to balance out the others. So there cannot be any positive FDI in the current situation. He should know that, and they are quick wins. I say this again and again. The South is, is a quick win for Mr. President. He can fix it in weeks. He can even decide to say, look, I want to have a tour of the South East. Imagine you saying you want to have a tour of the South East. Do you understand me? I want to go to Enugu. I want to go to Abia. I want to see that, that, that industrial city, the industrial hub. Let me tell you what used to happen very quickly. In my days, when I was much younger, we used to have two places that we laugh at. Either we say, this is Taiwan, or we say, this is Abamed. Mm. They used to go together. Mm. Either we say, this is Taiwan, or we say, this is Abamed. Fast forward to 2023. What do you think about Taiwan? Fantastic. Where is Abamed? Nowhere. Mr. President says that Abamed, I want to see it again. Imagine him having such conversation. I want to go to Enugu and see what's going on. I want to go to Abia, uh, not Abia again, Imo. And see, such conversation will change the dynamics and kill that sit at home thing. You don't want to address it directly. Nam the Kanu, let's have a discussion. What's really going on? This can be done within days. And he has to show himself as being the president of the Federal Republic of interesting, Nigeria. Interesting suggestion coming from you, Mr. Nya Tucker. <laughs> but seeing President Tinubu as you have seen him, uh, let's, let's start from... Uh, the campaign season to after he took office and to now, a few weeks since he took office. Do you see him, his body language, his disposition as one who would go to the Southeast or who would cut the Southeast? Do you see him in any way um, appearing to consider the Southeast as an issue for him, something he considers important at all? 
I, I think I'm going to make efforts to have a meeting with him. I'll, I'll, I'll make that effort, probably through the Senate president or something, because you need to draw a line between Jagaban and the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He's not, you see, what, what Buhari did for, for eight years, and we accommodated, we tolerated, we, uh, we never accepted between accommodated and tolerated. Mr. Tinubu will not enjoy that, that sentiment. He will not. So, you know, that is his style. Baba goes slow. I've tried my best. He's not going to, for one reason or the other, I don't know why, but I can assure you that he will. It's not because of age, because if it was about age, I mean, the age difference is not too much. It's just that, for whatever reason, we just, maybe because he was a, a soldier, but Tinubu will get a lot of the sort of pushback he never anticipated. So he needs some very sharp brains to re repackage him, to remodel him, and he has to agree to be coached. Ronaldo and Messi, as good as they are, they have coaches. Every president must have coaches on protocols, on ethics, on things he cannot do. Whether you like eating agbado, if they say you can't eat agbado unless you're inside your house, you've got to accept it. No, 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 no. That's my life. That's how I. No, no, no. We accepted that with Mr. Uh, with uh, Baba Goslo, uh, our former president. But we will not take it from him. And he's a sharp man. Atinubu is a very intelligent person. He's a very sharp person. He's a go-getter. So all he needs is to have the right people giving him the right information and get those psychophants off him because they'll put him in trouble. He was known for getting round pegs in round holes, but I'm watching him to see how the pegs are working. And his media person right now is not giving me that impression because he should be a reconciler. He should be somebody that is buying the love of the people and not one that is attacking. That attack will take him no way. It will do him more harm than he would expect. He should be somebody that, that, can, can, that can win the heart of people to him and it's like, wow, this is good. What can he do? A and what he can do A is courtier. love Southeast. Love Southeast. I'm not from the Southeast, though I'm an in-law, but he should love Southeast for his own sake. Yeah. All right. Well said. Well said. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I want to see the day where you walk into Asu Rock and have this conversation with them because I think it's actually very necessary uh, to have Nigerians all united and everyone feeling an equal in the state. Let's move forward to the next very important um, you know, headline here, Orasanya report list cost cuts to raise quick cash. Um, FG's 241% recurrent budget bump exposes bloated bureaucracy. Many analysts have pointed to this Orasanya report. And if I'm not mistaken, you probably also have. What's your take on this very uh, headline? Orasanya report is a very coincide and professionally put result that is not politically correct. Okay? I'll tell you so why. So you differ? No, no, I agree completely with... I say it's not politically correct. Okay, not politically correct. correct. Okay, I get your point. I get your point. Correct. But professional and what will help this country. Now, I asked the question, which Jagaban are we getting? Is it that a Milokon of my turn to also be president, to also do my own? Or is that a Milokon my turn to also show that Nigeria can be fixed? To also show that leadership must be beyond primordial sentiment? Mm -hmm. it, it, my turn to come and tell Nigerians that we have Nigerians that we can compare to the likes of Lee Kuan Yew and the rest that are focused on target and the good of the country, is that my turn to come and give Nigeria the leadership it, it, it deserves and play down? You know, my father-in-law used to say in those days, you know, some of these jokes are not are lost on our children because those days, rice, before you cook rice, you have to bring that big tray 
put it and then you know <laughs> kind of pick it and remove all the stones okay yes. before you can cook rice but you know this we don't know that again so my fa my father-in-law used to say there is too much rice in this uh, pot of stone you know it, it kind of in nigeria government and politics are like a pilot and the engineer politics is the pilot is the engineer who gets dirty, who knocks, who does this, the oil and everything. When he finishes fixing the aircraft, he leaves. People will come and clean up the aircraft, and then you see the pilots coming in in their immaculate, speakable, you know, outfits looking all, you know, sharp and prim and proper. Then they come in, they have their protocols, they have their dynamics. Now, politics is like the engineer. Politicking, all sorts of this finished. Now is the governance. Governance runs on certain rules, fundamentals, and dynamics. That is why we have become the poverty capital of the world because we are moving too much politics into governance. In fact, there is too much governance in this politics. Exactly. You know, it shouldn't be or too, so. Or too much so politics in this governance. In fact, there's too much government politics in this government. You know, it should be the other way. Yeah. But what I'm trying to bring out is this. In taking decisions, in the things that he sets out to do, let him consider in the Orassian report. He's going to tell you that there are too many duplications in our agencies, MDAs. Exactly. And we are spending too much money. He's telling you that our overhead, you know, in budget, you talk in terms of the recurrent and the capital. The recurrent, you talk in terms of, you know, uh, salaries and wages and then running of government. Then you realize that salaries and wages and running of government, which is the recurrent, okay, takes so much. And then the capital, which is actually the engine that should drive the system, is so little. So how are you going to make progress? Our Russian report says, let's reverse this and actually interrogate our recurrent. And in recurrent, let us see where the money is going. Yeah. How many ministries do we have? Okay, the constitution says you must have a minister from each of the states of the federation. Beautiful, we agree. So the question is, now, Ramfak of, of recent, you know, the revenue, whatever, mobilization, yeah. is now even toying with increasing the salaries of public office holders that over the years, everybody has been shouting that these guys are getting too much money. It means that there's a complete disconnect between this people in government and those of us outside. It means that whatever we are talking here, they're not even hearing. Because for the person to as much as think think of increasing salaries of political office holders there must be something fundamentally wrong we're not in the same system and then it's at the same time that mr president is telling us that we may need to tighten our belts that harder times are coming i expected mr president before orassian report to say fellow nigerians you know things are hard and i want to lead from the front I have been blessed by God to be able to take care of myself and my family. So in the next four years, I want to cut the you know government house feeding and all those things. I can take care of myself. I don't really need it. Mm -hmm. Number two, my aides are going to also have to realize that we don't have money. This is biting hard with the removal of the petroleum subsidy. The poor man is going so broke. And things are hard. Let's let me start by making certain sacrifices. And fellow Nigerians, we are all going to have to do the same. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Imagine him coming out and starting with himself and with his cabinet. And that my ministers, I'm sorry to say, if you are not coming here for service, then don't just bother because it's not going to be business as usual. All those um, foreign trips and this and that, we are in hard times and we must be willing to take some very, very hard decisions because we want to rescue this country. So if you are coming in for bloated this, perish the thought. Imagine my president coming on a, a chat. He can call a media person that he likes. You know, a more relaxing and said, you know, uh, my sister, the way things are, 
we've got to make sacrifices. I, I've decided, I've discussed with my family, all our trips, private, we're going to sponsor ourselves. God has blessed me to be able to do that. And I'm going to have, you know, there was a guy, let me call a name. There was a guy, Senator Udo Udoma, you know, we went to him on three occasions. He turned down ministerial appointment. And some of us that are close to him went to him and said, what's going on? He said, Ezekiel, I come out poorer as a minister. I've given my best right now. Let me face my... And it sounds so... I come out poorer because he goes there. He does the right thing. He does not get involved in any funny things. His business has been left... You know, those are people that we should go as a nation and beg them. Yeah, uh, sadly, we have so many career politicians who are just uh, all over the place looking for how to plunder. We need to retire them. People should be retired now, sister. Tough times need tough men that can mm -hmm. take tough decisions. That's where we are now. We need to retire them. So we need a we leader who does not back. need to be... We need a leader who is not seeking to be politically correct, but a leader That's who right. put Nigeria first. 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 Have we Nigeria found that? First. Have we found that in President Ahmed Tinubu? That remains to um, be seen. We are watching to see if we have found exactly. that in President Tinubu. Exactly. And just as we're talking about these political careers, um, this uh, Politics. career politicians, let's go to the, the, the headline on the Punch newspaper above the masthead. You have... Principal officers, National Assembly crisis splits APC National Working Committee, Adamu meets Tunubu. <laughs> you, you see, politicians and political parties should please shut up and pack. When you give a man a job, allow that man to choose his tools so that if he's good, we clap for him. If it's bad, we blame him. National Assembly have gone and they have chosen the people they want. And you are here, you know, having attitude. They didn't consult you. Consult you as what? And they even say they did. But assuming they did not. Mr. Pabio and the House of Reps uh, um, uh, President hmm. or Chairman, have decided the people they want to work with. In fact, they have consulted amongst themselves and chosen their principal officers. And you say they did not consult us. Our hands were not there. To do what? To decide who I'm going to work with? You see, these are the things that we Nigerians should rise and say, look, give them a free hand. Let them choose. So that at the end of the day, because these are principal officers, Okay, it means that when they want to now do oversight and their committees and chairman of committees, there's too much politics into our governance. Yeah, but I some have argued that, some are arguing, as this is unfolding, that what played out is simply selection, that it's not democratic. That is for who is complaining? The, the opposition. Apart from oh. the apart from the APC National Working Committee, led by the chairman, Adamu, yes. Opposition yes. members are saying that the National Assembly is losing its freedom. It's, it's being sabotaged and that what happened is pure selection and not an election. Two questions. Who is complaining? I just National said so. National Assembly or outsiders? You must answer that question. No. <laughs> this one has interview. Let me the interview. Anyway, I just said serious, so. <laughs> on a serious note, Nigerians need to be told that there is a way some things are done in the National Assembly. I saw in the House of Reps where every one of them stood up one after the other and say, I support this person. I support this person. I support this person. And at the end of the day, how can you say that you didn't, it wasn't democratic? I saw it. You now go to the Senate. I sat and saw it. I saw them count, not count, cast the ballot. I saw it. In fact, when they were counting, I almost had heart attack <laughs> because my candidate, when I started seeing you know, 
the votes from the other side, I'm like, Jesus, not again. You know? We all saw it. They counted the vote. It was so unbelievably close. You know? 46, 53. You know? Or 63. It was close. The difference was nine people. Nine people. That's what people say. People say 17. No. The difference was nine people. For instance, mm -hmm. minus nine from Akpabio brings him to 54. Okay, plus nine for um, the other guy, you know, takes him to 55. Subtract nine, add to that nine to that. That guy would have nine votes was the difference. Nine votes, nine people. Do you understand me? Yeah. So we saw it. So at what point did it become undemocratic? So I think, sister, let's leave them. Do what they want to do in the, in the chamber so that when I want to blame you, I'll blame you well. And not to say, ah, they were imposed on us. Akpabio cannot say that anybody was imposed on him. That's why some of us are his friends, have to go to his, like mosquitoes, go to his ears and keep shouting. Because Nigeria, we said, yeah, to bed you were. You said the man was good, uncommon, uncommon. So that uncommon has to come uncommon. That is why common. I threw that first headline to you, the issue concerning the SME loans, because you yeah. say he's such an uncommon personality. And here yeah. we're starting with that report. Yeah. He, 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 between you and I, off record, they acted on available data and statistics, but the communication was not adequate. And as a result, it looked kind of um, jaundiced in a way. So that communication... We don't need excuses this time around in your talk. We don't. We want leaders who, have, who know what they're doing. I mean, you can't do something as serious as that and not be as transparent as possible, knowing all the vested interests. Okay, so we'll move forward to flood alert. Still on the Punch newspaper. Flood alert. States order evacuation as FG issues disaster warning. Perhaps I should give you the riders to this. Nima wants massive flood of massive flooding. Kano, Delta, Kebi, Plateau, and 10 other states. Okay, Akwai Bomb, Delta, other residents demand alternative shelters. You see, um, the issue of flooding is something that we face every year. And every government because they have limited period, four years, they try very hard to dodge it and hope they can com complete their tenure and move on. Because if you are to attack, let me take a quiet bomb state for instance. If you are to attack flooding the way that will be sustainably addressed, you are going to give yourself nothing less than a 10, 15 years action program. The first thing is mapping the water routes. Apart from the banking of where the water, you know, the first is where is the source, the major source. Number two is what is the path. And you try to block the major source and you try to clear the path because water will clear its way. When you have done that analysis, you are going to have to relocate communities. In that process, you are going to have to give them new environments. That's a mega project that does not come in four years. And if you start and you're not sure of continuity, you are going to have a situation where people are going to jettison the money that you have sunk in. It's like doing a very serious piling and piling and piling without the substructure coming up to carry the 35-story building. If you live without the superstructure, people will come and say, look at how this man wasted our money. That is why I told Akwaibu, I said, look, let us come and sit down, all parties, non-partisan, and if Nigeria can do that, it will be wonderful. And let the Akwaibu people own a process of evolving a 30 years roadmap that is not government specific, is not my thing. If you can have the animation of we, the people of Akwaibu, it means that whoever is coming, is going to run on the agenda of Akwaibom people, not Nyaitok. Anything that is Nyaitok, once Nyaitok leaves office, it ends with him. So we've not been able to come to that animation of being able to, to marshal out a 30-year program that is 
in tra you know, in, in put in our constitution because it is done by us from all parties. That is when you can now give a development agenda and plan to controlling the flood in Aquaibom. The, the same thing can be taken from the micro to the macro. Nigeria can, in fact, it's even better if it is done as a national template. We look at all the, the national boundaries, how they come in. We look at all the states, how it's affected. And then we work out a national plan where the National Assembly is part of it and they make it part of our law so that there's going to be this consistency over a period of, say, 20 years, we'll be able to address. But when you just come and say, let Tinubu address flood, he's not going to. He knows he has too many other things to do. He knows that the money he has is limited. So he's going to limit himself to the things that will make him look good. Incidentally, that's the politics that we play. We don't look at foundational politics. We are looking at the superstructure. What did he do? What did which bridge? I built road. I built bridge. Okay. Now, what... Time, time will not permit us to, 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 to delve deeper into this because this is a very sensitive matter, it's a it's very it's sensitive. It's Annually, these warnings are given, but as you have said, they just brush it off as... Because if they had taken time years ago to begin to lay yeah. these foundations that you're talking about, we wouldn't be here today. And if you look around the IDP camps across the country, or well, the different parts of the country where you have them, the state that the people there are in, quite deplorable, very sad to see fellow Nigerians living like that. Money's uh, budgeted for them. You see them clearly diverted. It is sad. That's it. It is. It. So let's That's quickly it. touch on a very last one, which is the UTME forgery. Reps order probe fraudulent app developer risk dismissal. The you jam know, matter. I, number one, I want to commend the House of Reps who um, got into this issue and they've said, Jam, uh, can you just take action and let's look into this matter? Number two, I want to say that Jam was being a lot too hasty. You know, common sense will show you that this young girl, there's, there's, there's a fourth columnist, you know, there's something wrong somewhere. Don't just say she fought, she fought, she told a lie. No, even by looking at the girl, you know that she's a victim of some sort. So I, I expected Jam to say, look, we, have, we are in the know of this situation and we are looking into it, it wouldn't take us more than one week. Within seven days, we will come up with the situation report. We'll know where the problem came in and what to do. Now they banned the girl for three years from jam. They are doing this, taking the, It's hasty. It doesn't make sense. Okay, let's, let's, sense. Let, let's leave it at that and see how it unfolds. The, let's see what this probe will come up with. Ezekiel Enya talk. thank you so much for your time. Thanks and God bless you. Always a pleasure to have you. Zika Lanyatok, public affairs analyst, joined us on Off the Press from Iquibom State. Stay with us. We'll be back with our first hot topic on The Breakfast.